Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts. A five-alarm fire, five bells. Move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters. Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire. In just a minute, we'll bring you the story of a rookie fireman's first fire and a thrill-packed ride on the giant aerial truck on Firefighters. But first... Here's a message we hope you find exciting, too. Tim Collins, an ex-GI and the son of Ben Collins, firefighter hero, who years ago lost his life in the line of duty, had just completed the training course for rookies. and has been assigned to the relief squad to await his first call. It's midwinter, and a snowstorm has been raging all day as Tim returns home. Hi, Mom. Is dinner ready? I'm starved. Mercy, son. You want to freeze us? Throw the <laughs> snow off and shut the door quick. Okay, Mom. There. <sighs> well, that's better. <sighs> Goodness, it must be down to zero. Oh, pretty near, Mother. It was two above an hour ago, and they say it's going to five below by morning. Wow. <sighs> Hey, but say, let, let's not talk about the weather. What I'm interested in is food and lots of it. You're always interested in food and lots of it. <laughs> You'll just have to wait a few minutes. Trudy and Jim aren't back from skating yet. Oh. We'll eat just as soon as they get in. Oh, hello, children. Hi, Hi. Mom. When do we eat? I'm <laughs> starved. There's another one, Mom. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, hello, Tim. Trudy. Hi, Jim. Mother, can we eat early tonight? Mark and Betty want me to go to the show with them. Yes, dear. Everything's ready to put on just as soon as you wash. Oh, boy. I'll hurry. Come on, Trudy. Coming. <laughs> oh, uh, Tim, dear, I almost uh -huh. forgot. There was a phone call for you a while ago. Uh oh, I wonder who it was. Well, I don't know. But they said it was very urgent that you call Cody at this number. Mm -hmm. Here, I wrote it down for you. Uh, say, that's Chief Cody down at fire headquarters. I better call him right away. I wonder what in the world he could want at this time of night. I don't know, but I'll soon find out. Hello, Chief Cody speaking. Uh, hello, Chief. This is Tim Collins of the Relief Squad. Did you call me, sir? Oh, Collins, yes. It's this blizzard. I'm calling all department personnel out for 24-hour duty until the emergency is over. We can't take a chance on a bad fire in this kind of weather. Oh, yes, sir. I I'll be right down. Uh, oh, where do I report? I'm assigning you to Aerial Truck Company Number One. Yes, sir. I I'll be there right away. Goodbye. Well, what was it, son? Oh, I got a report for duty at Truck Company Number One. Oh my goodness! Hope you don't have to make a run on a night like this. Oh, got to, Mother. This is when I'm needed the most. But, son, it's so dangerous. I just can't help but think how I used to worry about your dad when the weather was bad. I know, Mother, but I'll be all right. Golly, it, it was a lot colder than this back there in Belgium during the Battle of the Bulge. I know, son, but I just can't help worrying. And it was a lot more dangerous, too, but I got along all right. Oh, so you, you just quit worrying. And, and, and who knows? This may be the chance I've been waiting for to show Chief Cody what I can do in action. All right, son. Now I guess you'd better hurry and report for duty. I'll send Trudy over to the firehouse with a good warm dinner for you. Oh, Mom, you're wonderful. Don't forget to dress warm. Uh, Chief Cody, Tim Collins reporting for duty. Oh, yes, Collins. Sorry to have to start you out on a night like this. But I'm afraid if we have any trouble during this storm, we'll need every man on the force. Yes, sir, I understand. I'm just glad of the chance. That's the kind of talk I like to hear, Collins. You know, you remind me of your dad when he was a young fellow starting out with the department. Uh -huh. A great fireman and a fine man, Ben was. Thank you, sir. I only hope I can be as good a fireman. You will, or I'm no judge of men. But now, uh, you know your station? Uh, yes, sir. I've put you with an experienced crew. You shouldn't have any trouble. I... Oh, oh, here it comes. Looks like you're going to a fire end, too. Yes, sir. Well, that's what I'm here for. Stand by. 8th Street. 8th Street, corner of Maple. All right, men. Let's roll. You 
okay, Tim? Yeah, I'm all right. Hey, you better hook your arm over the bar. You can hold on better in case we skid and your fingers will get so cold. Oh, thanks. Your first fire? Yeah. You suppose it's a big one? Hey, you never can tell till you see him, Tim. We'll find out pretty quick. Uh-huh. Around this next corner. Then it's straight down Maple. Oh. Hey, watch out! Gosh. He cut that one close, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, a little. But you can count on Mac. He and Lambert, the tiller man, have been working together herding this apparatus through all kinds of weather for better than ten years. Oh. Only thing I worry about is other drivers. They're what cause all the trouble. Yeah. Hey, look. Huh? The car coming. Oh, look at the fool right in the middle of the street. Hold on, kid. We're going to hit. Nurse, I'm Chief Cody. I want to inquire about one of my boys they brought into the hospital here about an hour ago. Oh, yes, Chief. You mean Collins in 508. Yes. Is he? Is he badly injured? No. Luckily, he's going to be all right. A slight concussion and a broken arm, but... Otherwise, he's in good shape. Would you like to see him? Yes, please. Very well. You just come with me, please. When we picked him up, he was unconscious. I didn't know how badly he might be injured, but I couldn't wait. We had to go on to the alarm. Here we are. This is his room, Uh, Chief Cody. Mr. Collins, you have a visitor. Hiya, Tim. Oh, gosh, it's you, Chief. I didn't expect you to be coming down here. Well, I got to check up on things, you know. Tell me, how are you, my boy? Oh, gee, Chief, I'm all right, only... Well, this left wing of mine's kind of out of service for a while, I guess. Well, I'm mighty thankful it wasn't any worse. Yeah, say, how how are the other fellas? I, well, did they get hurt? They're okay, Tim. See, the apparatus didn't turn over after the crash, just skidded into the curb. Oh. They hung on and came through with nothing more than a good shaking up. Well, how about the driver in the car that hit us? Yeah, he's all right, too. Only, well, I can't feel very concerned about careless drivers who fail to give the right away to fire apparatus. Uh, yes, sir. Thoughtless drivers are a greater hazard to us than the worst fires. Yes, sir. Was it, was it a bad alarm, Chief? The very worst kind, son. A false alarm. A false alarm? Yes. It's criminal to call fire apparatus out in a blizzard like this, make men risk their lives, waste taxpayers' money, and endanger valuable equipment just to provide a little excitement for someone who likes to see the fire engine make a run. Oh, gosh, I can't imagine anybody doing a thing like that. Probably some kid. I uh, picked up this red and green knit glove right under the box. Uh Believe me, I'd like to get my hands on the kid who did it. I'd teach him a lesson and then turn him over to the police. You know it's a civil offense to ring a false alarm. Uh, Yes, sir, I know, but... Well, how how do you know some kid didn't... Well, just happened to drop the glove there, you know, while he was playing. I'm afraid not, Tim. We've already had the arson squad working on the case, and they've pretty definitely tied the glove up to the false alarm. Well, then all you have to do now is find the owner of the glove. That's right. It won't be easy, but in a case as serious as this, we won't stop until we've got the guilty party. I'm sorry, Chief Cody, but I'm afraid Mr. Collins has visited long enough for now. Oh, of course, I'm leaving right now. Uh, Goodbye, Tim. Good luck. Oh, good night, Chief. And and thanks for coming in. Oh, yes, I was about to forget something. Now hurry up and get that arm in shape. Because there's a regular job waiting for you with Aerial Truck Company number one when you get well. Hey, did somebody say something about a picture show? Can I go, too? Me, too. I want to go. <laughs> it looks like you got a party on your hands, Tim. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll all go. Get your things on. I won't be a minute. Yeah. We can make the first show if we hurry. Better put your gloves on, Jimmy. It's pretty cold. He can't, Mommy. He lost them. He lost them? You mean he lost those nice gloves Aunt Ellen sent him for Christmas? Uh Uh-huh. I didn't either. I only lost one of them. See? Here's the other one right here in my pocket. So there. Oh, dear, Jimmy, I declare you're always losing oh, things. Oh, hey, let, let, let me see that glove, Jimmy. What for? Come on, let's go or miss the first show. Jim, let me see that glove. Well, what's the matter, son? It's that glove of Jimmy's. Yeah, it's for the right hand. And the other one fitted the left hand. The other one? Well, what other one are you talking about, son? The glove Chief Cody found. Under the fire alarm box the night I was hurt. Whoever turned in that false alarm was wearing a red and green knit glove. Exactly like the one Jimmy lost. Well, it looks like Tim's own brother Jimmy may be responsible for the false alarm that almost cost him his life. 
We'll hear more about this when you listen next time to Firefighters. In just a minute, Chief Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But first, here's a message of interest to all of you. And now, here is Fire Chief Bob Cody. Hello, boys and girls. You know, veteran firemen will tell you that the best way to fight fires is to put them out before they start. And that's how you boys and girls can help us firefighters. Fire prevention starts in the home. And I'd like to give you a tip right now that'll prevent a lot of mighty bad fires. Well, here it is. Go down in the basement and up in the attic or third floor and see if there are any old newspapers or rags piled up in your home. Oh, if you find any, make it your number one job to get them cleaned out. Waste paper is one of the most common fire hazards found in the average home. Well, that's all for now. I'll see you again tomorrow. And don't forget, I'm counting on you to help prevent fires. So long. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back at the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters. Firefighters is written by Frank Jones and is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.